I feel like by the time I get to so-called pension age, whatever that's going to be at the time, mm-hmm. um, there probably won't be one because the government can't afford it now, let alone, and we weren't supposed to live more than, you know, five or ten years post retirement when it was first invented. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard, where I get to speak to property investors from all around Australia about their property investing journey. My name is Louise Carr and I'm one of the senior coaches here at Positive Real Estate, where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there's some incredible stories to tell, which will hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. So my guest today is Kylie Duncan Teva, and we discuss three um, of her biggest lessons, being single, um, making big financial decisions and navigating the world of property investing. From being um, being self-employed in travel agents um, to navigating through that finance, um, through her COVID in, time, in times as well. She's, Kylie shares some valuable lessons with us all and I hope you enjoy this conversation with Kylie. Hi everyone, welcome to the podcast. My name is Louise Carr and today I'm hosting the podcast with a fabulous guest, Kylie, um, Kylie Duncan Teva. Uh, welcome to the podcast, guys. So it's certainly Kylie, we've had a little bit of trivia because I've mentioned at the start, like I've known you ever since I've joined PRE and a bit of interesting trivia, we actually joined at the same time. <laughs> so January 2014. <laughs> so we, we've, we've passed the 10 year anniversary, we've survived. Please. Absolutely, absolutely a decade together, over a decade together. <laughs> so look, it's great to have you and thanks for being, um, thanks for being, sharing part of your journey and being part of this today as well. So we'll get straight into it. So before, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, such as your profession, a little bit about your personal or professional background? It'd be great. Yep. Um, so I am a travel agent of uh, 30 years this year um, and I've been in business for myself now for the last, uh, hang on, where are we, 2010, end of 2010, went into business for myself, so being a sole sole trader um, throughout that period except COVID when I had to go out and find other work for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, the borders were closed and the world shut down and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, as a, as a single person, um, just wanted to work out ways to be able to enable a, a, a financial future mm. um, that was going to be a lot more stable than if I had stayed employed with somebody else with the risks that come with that these days of not necessarily having... Um, you know, and being paid what I'm worth rather than what somebody else thinks I'm worth to, I guess, is is a, a motivation. Um, mm. So yeah, so I came from came from that, um, and I'd also had three car accidents in a very short three and a half years. So I had to find other ways to make income because it actually turned out that I wasn't capable of sitting all day every day mm. at a desk to be able to enable that income as well. So. You know, there was, a, there was a couple of big things that made me sort of sit up and take notice and become self-employed and then follow this journey with real estate through mm. PRE. Yes, yeah. I remember at the core of that is your independent independentness as well and wanting to be, <laughs> you know, certainly well, an autonomy, uh, which is great. So yeah, and, and I guess I just I feel like by the time I get to so-called pension age, whatever that's going to be at the time, mm. um, there probably won't be one because the government can't afford it now, let alone, and we weren't supposed to live more than, you know, five or ten years post-retirement when it was first invented. So mm, Yeah. Yeah, so certainly look, to have more freedom and choices and I know travel is pretty high on your priority list, so which is what I'll Yeah, be absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, live and breathe what you love, which is great. Mm. Mm. So what has been your experience with property before joining PRE? Um, so I had purchased my own home, mm-hmm. um, just a three-bedroom basic war veterans home um, in Blair Athol, mm-hmm. here in South Australia, and um, I just didn't know how to really go about finding out how to do the research and, and making sure that I would make a best decision for further investing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so there was a member of PRE at a um, an event that was held in Adelaide, and I think he's still there, Todd. Yes, yes, he is. Um, so, yeah, it was just, you know, the information that he shared was, you know, it hit home about what they what PRE could offer, mm. um, you know, the education, the support, all of those things, and you can use as much or a little as you choose, but certainly the support is always there. Mm. And, um, you know, for the lifetime mentoring fees that I paid back then, um, it's absolutely been worth it. So, you know, my first property didn't do as well because the council changed the rules just after purchase and that meant that the property value went down and the rents went down and all sorts of things. So that was quite a torrid time for someone who was on a limited, I know I was on a very limited income at the time, mm -hmm. um, but certainly I was able to get out of that pretty even Stevens in the end. I ended up finding a really good real estate agent locally who um, did a great job um, after sacking the first one. Um, and he did a really great job and we, we we got the job done and I got out and I was able to start afresh. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without the, the support of the coaches and the, the whole team. Mm. At the area. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how did that um, the experience and coaching with PRE help you make, you know, good investment decisions um, after, after that, after joining Positive? Um, it's just making sure that, you know, your numbers and you do your due diligence in where the property's at, what kind of properties, um, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, and yes, circumstances change. And we talked earlier today about the, because the, the, the property that I've got now is a one bedroom apartment in Liberty One. Mm, in Melbourne and for those um, yeah beautiful then, you know but and whilst the property value itself hasn't gone up and I you know the deposit was paid pre-COVID and then of course COVID delayed everything for which I was eternally grateful because I had didn't have the income to settle during COVID mm. um and it's it's just it's worked out really well like the the range appraisals have gone up um, so I'm just in negotiation with yourself and just checking contracts and things so that we can perhaps look at that and get a, a solid increase on the rent after the first 12 months because mm -hmm. that's yeah. coming up. Um, and just being able to know that it's a solid investment where I'm at, you know, mm -hmm. just having, you know, gone through the numbers with the rental appraisals and, and whilst the property hasn't gone up huge amounts in value since I purchased it, I think, you know, with the way things are changing, then that will improve. Mm. Um, the, the yield is really, really good at the moment and I'm hoping it will go even better once I've renegotiated the rent. Yeah, absolutely. From the research we did today and the, the data with vacancy rates and everything like that, it looks really, really promising, which is good. And, you know, mm. certainly yeah. we discussed earlier, like you bought really, really well in a gentrification or suburb. Um, so, you know, certainly with a, you know, without divulging too much information for, you know, with a three in front of it in, in Melbourne is, you know, un unheard of. So, yeah, certainly well, well positioned there as well. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so before PRE, and you may have really uh, uh, probably answered this in a way, but if you could elaborate a little bit more, what was holding you back from investing before joining PRE? Um, finances, confidence, and education. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, like to be able to then have, um, you know, like to, to be able to then go down that journey, like once I saw Todd speak at that event and I then wanted to work out how the heck I could make it happen. Mm. And I did have a 10 grand kitty at the time. Yep. So I had to work out how to make that happen to be able to join the education process and then it was a learning about okay so how can I get my finances stable enough to then be able to mm. then purchase my property and mm. then learning all those skills along the way of the due diligence and reading the reports and doing mm. the numbers and all of those mm. other things and yeah. talking to the coaches checking in with contracts on you know what was there being able to read through the, the property investment reports that are sent out with all with the um, property releases that mm. PR are involved in. Um, mm. So if I wanted to buy outside of the offers that PRE do, now I feel like I have the confidence to be able to do it. Mm. 
but I certainly, mm. um, knowing the, the deals that you guys have all got in the marketplace, I'm confident that each time I enter a deal from here on in and I've done my research mm. appropriately, yeah. then, you know, that I've got to be moving forward and upwards each time I do a property purchase now. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And you're very thorough in that regard. So you're due diligence, your checklist. So I love, it. <laughs> you know, thank you. You know, you certainly follow the process and, and very, very diligent in that regard. So I remember, you know, there was quite a few things to navigate, being self-employed, obviously recovering from some car injuries as well was um, certainly a you know, a roller coaster, but I commend you for, you know, sticking, knowing your purpose, knowing your higher purpose. You had, you had a goal and target and you're, you're very, very determined to reach it. So it's great. Mm, climbing. climbing yes. this year. Well, fingers crossed we can, you know, get this one settled and then, you know, another probably 12 months and I should be able to look at another property then. Yeah, absolutely. It's good. And very um, exciting. It is very exciting. And what do your friends and family think about your investment decisions? Um, or do you tell them about your investment decisions? <laughs> um, that, well, my immediate family, so my parents and probably my sister more so, um, I have, you know, discussions with and they go, you know, and my, well, and also my brother-in-law because he's very, um, mm. very communicative and interested in all of that sort of thing as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, look, they're they're fabulous with it, and like other people outside of that um, immediate circle, I guess, are like, oh wow, wow, you must be doing all right. And I was like, well, I've actually got really good education, and I think I'm lucky. And I'm like, well, no, it's actually not luck. It's a lot of hard work and investment in myself, mm. investment in time, and definitely all of the above to get things o across the line. Um, nothing more so than when you're getting a new loan or refinancing, especially mm -hmm. as a self-employed person. Employed, yeah. Plenty of others out there that are in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's just that commitment and finding, you know, knowing where to go and, and who to get. Yep. get and, and having having a great broker that's willing to mm -hmm. communicate with, um, you know, if they're not already part of the PRE team, like I've got someone who's not, um, but she has literally gone into battle to yeah. me, you know, for twice now, you know, once for a short term mm -hmm. um, lending, private lender, mm -hmm. um, so that I could settle on my property, um, yeah. this most recent one. And then when I had needed to refinance, because it was, a, as I say, only a short term mm -hmm. loan, and being able to do that and getting it done in the lead up to Christmas mm -hmm. and, and bang on the line, and like it, she got it over, and yeah. I just take my hat off to it, but she's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really good. And, you know, working with your account, yeah, looking for solutions as well rather than just saying no, um, which is what yeah, what we like to work with people. So don't tell me no, yeah. tell me how, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, she did tell me later. She goes, Kylie, I really thought I was going to have to say no, but we still oh. worked the way. So. <laughs> I'm glad she told you later, not before. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> we'll find a solution. We've got to get this, this happening for you. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And so when you think about your investment journey, so it's been a you know ten year journey or uh, well plus now, um, ten years with PRE, what has been the some of the biggest lessons that you've you've learned um, or um, for people that are at the beginning of their investment journey, what advice or insights would you would you have for them? Um, be organised right from the start. So whether it's physical or digital or both, be really, really organised and have everything set up in in specific folders for you know for contracts for the PI for the property investment reports for you mm. for everything that comes through from you know whether it's your depreciation reports or building reports if it's a new build or mm. any of those things, just to be able to keep them all in one solid place. Um, and then whether it's for your own accounting services or for your bookkeeper or account, I've actually got a bookkeeper because I hate it that much. Yeah. I'm willing to pay her to do that work because it, she does it now for the PRE stuff, my shares and my business. So, you know, she gets the yeah. whole lot. Yeah. Um, so if that, that would be the biggest key is making sure you're organised and systematic in what you're doing because then when it comes time for rent renewals or renegotiations or mm. whatever it is, you can literally lay your fingers on anything you need at the drop of a hat, mm. um, which 
saves so much time and energy if you need to do anything. Mm. Um, you know, and that helps with your due diligence as well. Like you're going, oh, okay, I know where I saw that report that Louise sent me. Um, I've got that information right here. Mm. But yeah. yeah, that's probably the biggest thing during, you know, your due diligence with just being super organised with where you're storing all of your information and yeah. contracts, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, good advice. And I remember, as you remember, it was in the um, on North Terrace there. We used to meet on North Terrace and have that. But you just, you know, hated bookkeeping and the numbers. So I remember having that. Like, let's outsource it then. You don't need to do it. Yes. Let's make this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just it's been mm. seriously that was the best thing I could have done for myself because I just, you know, like when there's something I can go in and you know think about it and five minutes I can spend in there and update some stuff. Yeah. And that might be most of the personal stuff so that the bookkeeper doesn't have to do that. But for the majority of it, I like I have she has access to this particular Dropbox Dropbox folder mm. and I all of my invoices and receipts and everything that goes in there for the relevant financial years. Mm. And she just goes in and, and has it at her fingertips so she can just, you know, snap her fingers and go, Yep, I've got that and it mm. saves her time as well. Yeah, yeah, and then you can concentrate on the things you enjoy and travel and your clients. And we're not going to make yeah, money yeah, from it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give you yeah your time back yeah. and happiness as well. So tick tick. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, what would you say to the person watching this video who's thinking of growing a portfolio but is quite fearful or making the the wrong decision? Um, trust the processes that. PRE have set up trust in yes still do your own due diligence but certainly trust that PRE are doing their absolute best and it's in their, your best interest at PRE obviously to look after us as your um, mentees and clients yeah so and and just take on as much learning as you can and you know if it takes you know asking the same question a few times to to get it and a, a really good understanding then do that and um you know like I, I believe that there's a, an event coming up on the Gold Coast which I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make with everybody all in one spot um but if you are part of the group and there's a South Australian contingent that you want to catch up with and just bash ideas around with then I think that's also a really good idea I know that they, they we had some coffee things for COVID mm. um, and I don't know if they're going to come back, but certainly that's something that could potentially, you know, just even if you're just, you know, throwing ideas around with other other clients from PRE mm. and, you know, someone will have, else will have picked up something that you've missed and vice versa and then we can check in with you guys just mm. to make sure that we're on the right track. Um, so, yeah, it's just really trusting that PRE do have our best interests mm. At heart, like you know, because if if they don't, then you guys. If you don't, then we're out of business. Yeah, we wouldn't be here twenty plus okay. years later, and and have a good relationship with ten years plus. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's yeah, certainly lifetime mentoring and coaching, and and being able to support through all levels of your your um life yeah. as well through the ups and downs. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've been very yeah. fortunate to have had um you know not just yourself as a coach, but I've had Carolyn Weston. Yeah. Yeah. as well um and I think I even had Jason with a sit down there at one point <laughs> we met Jason to Adelaide um, loves that and, <laughs> and also Tav so uh, I had, yeah. had a double meeting with like you know I was talking to yourself and um Tav yeah. at one point and then Jason was over having breakfast and like okay so and then you know like just getting that really simple drill down with him of you know like you know him drawing it out and just going boom 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 and I'm like going oh I get it Mm. and it was just fabulous so trust the people at PRE know what they're actually doing mm. yeah beautiful thanks Kylie yeah it's not always nice to hear and you know the, the value um, that we we get giving and coaching and mentoring and and especially you know as a single person navigating through this um, through making some big financial decisions as well um, do you find um, you know, has that been a consideration or guidance? Do you have you felt sort of a little bit um, more confident to make? Oh, absolutely, decisions? more confident. Like, yeah. um, and knowing that you guys have got the experts, so yourselves as as the property and investment coaches, and then you've got the other people on the ground. Um, 
you know, the Brennans and, and those kind of guys mm, that have their area of specialty contribute mm. towards what makes TRE work best. And being able to get in on the ground floor of this, like I would, mm. you know, with the deal that I've got now in mm. um, Liberty One, there's mm. no way that I would have ever found that on my mm. home. Mm. Um, yeah. And I just, I think about it back now and just go, how magnificent that I've actually got this property mm. that is going to just give me an income long term. Mm. Yes, the interest rates have gone up however much they all went up last year, but mm. I've been able to refinance and got not too bad a deal. Mm. Um, and, you know, like I, I'm, I'm, this is probably the first year that I felt like I haven't been on my bare bones. Mm. Um, and just, and I'm like going, okay, life is actually good. The, the upswing is happening. The property is rented. Mm. The property is renting above um, what the expected minimum was when I first signed the contract, mm. um, the rental increase that I'm looking at is going to be even better again, potentially. Um, my business is pumping. Like every, the world is just coming back together for me now and I just feel like the future is now for me. Like it's just onwards and upwards mm. um, with, with all of that coming together and then, you know, being able to then probably be in a position in 12 months to, to be able to purchase another property whether or not it's something as good a value as what I've got this time, I don't, look, who knows? Yeah. But there are certainly opportunities that um, I'm really happy that PRE put through to us so that we can have a look um, yeah. and, and see whether or not they're worthwhile. And then you've got people you can crunch the numbers with and work out whether or not it's feasible mm. and, and just take it from there. And, you know, to be able to spread, you know, property types and what's, what's working, what's growing, what's, you know, the best zones to be in, all of those things are just, mm. you know, the, the education is just crucial. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And for those that don't know, Liberty One is in a suburb called Footscray, um, which is in Melbourne. So, you know, certainly some to get in on the ground in a gentrification area that's certainly up and coming um, with the early, especially with 8 million people moving to Melbourne and one of the fastest growing populations. So you're very, very well positioned there for, you know, not only it wasn't always just a short-term plan it was you know for a long long-term plan as well so very very well positioned them look forward to celebrating with you in another decade and watching all the magnificent growth <laughs> that you've had yes, yeah. and the retirement money <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and you, you've sacrificed a lot you know being self-employed and travel through COVID and and committing but you know I've watched you um you know certainly commit a lot um, to not only your business but also your personal and, and financial development over the, the last decade as well which is great so yeah and good to see that you're now um you know yes yeah, sh- i'm enjoying some of the successes <laughs> from that as yeah, well and yeah. thanks for the mentoring pleasure, really- pleasure. Mm, that's good um so it's so good to have you here and lots lots of so many lessons um sharing with that i'm just going to ask you that classic podcast question to wrap up today's interview which is if you could go back in time and you could meet your young Kylie um, for example when you're just beginning to to adult what would be your advice given your experience today that you would give young young Kylie 18 years um, I would probably have I actually started looking at property really early just thinking that you know mum and dad would be able to because there was at that time three of us three of us kids living in Adelaide and it would be cheaper for us to pay rent to pay their mortgage off um you know I mean mind you the rates were still a lot higher than what they are now Mm. um back in that in that period um but certainly I wish that you know I had had when I had the stable income back then that I had taken the leap and then just build it filled the other bedrooms with renters mm. and done that. So I've got a couple of cousins that have done that and smart move. Like they've mm. got, you know, other people paying most of their mortgage for them mm. um, and they're building really great equity with low debt and, you know, they've been waiting until they've got that most of that nailed down and then they'll purchase another one for investment. And it's like, mm. well, that's seriously really smart moves. And I wish I'd done that back then, like, you know. Yeah. That's probably the biggest thing, yeah. 
Mm, yeah. And being country, we're both farmers' daughters, it was very much a matter of having to move out young and coming to the, the city for more opportunities as well, wasn't it? So yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely. Well, there was, you know, mum and dad were out on the station, so there was literally, mm. unless I was going to work on the station, and that was never apparently an option, like, well, you know, the the, mm. the era of, of family then, like, dad was like, no, you have to go off like the stations going to the boys you girls have to go and find another career and earn an income and you'll probably get married and your husband will support you that was the era that we grew up in mm. um, and of course I did none of that <laughs> except, <laughs> except you know the career bit. create your own path yes <laughs> so I had, I had to literally forge my own path mm. and my brothers are still running the station mm. so I've had a very yeah. different life to them yeah, yeah, you have, and you know, one that you're enjoying curated yourself, which is good. That's awesome. mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, certainly. Biggest regret is, yeah, a lot of people, it's what you've said is um, familiar, like, yeah, wish I bought more real estate. <laughs> you know, at the time it would have seemed expensive, but you know, hindsight, yeah, but even just amazing. having started earlier, but you yeah, know, like it was, you know, I was mid 30s before I even bought my first house, mm. but to actually live in because I was scared of the commitment. Mm. So, you know, like I'd only just paid off a car and I'm like, no, I've got more debt. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess going from no debt into big debt the first time ever is pretty scary. And so mm. if there is anyone that's that's in that position, mm. I really just have a really good sit down, work work out your worst case scenarios, like what happens, like because you can always sell it. Mm. You can always sell the property that you've purchased mm. to, you know, get yourself out of a hole if that's what happens. But, mm. look, I think that probably the biggest thing is if you are young and you it's your first big purchase mm. then get in talk to your coaches get the research and due diligence done and mm. jump in because the sooner you start the more leverage you're going to get yeah yeah absolutely let's get on the ladder it might not be in the right you know the biggest house or the biggest the suburb that you want right no, and your first yeah. property might be like mine where it just didn't ended up being you know like a non-victory mm. um but it certainly wasn't a great loss in the end like I came out even Stevens thankfully mm -hmm. your um, first PPR yeah yeah so yeah. um and mm. so once I sold that first investment property and was able to then you know re-sit down with all the you know the money that I had with no debt and all that sort of stuff mm. it just was a lot easier yeah. second time around to do mm. um but yeah so yeah don't be scared to lean on the team because that's what the CRA team is there for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fresh slate sometimes good. Yeah. Absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. And, you know, this my second slate is now beautiful. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Kylie. Um, it's yeah, certainly a lot of valuable lessons there and, and nice to do delve a little bit, we'll reflect um, on our story together as well. So absolute pleasure to have you as always. So thank you very much. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing and bye for now.